the processor dome, a protective dome of the central processor. Without it, the processor will still work, of course, but it will be constantly overheating and restarting important systems, which will lead to a series of endless errors and drive any untrained artificial intelligence crazy. Well, I, I think part of the problem was that the AI was a little bit too well-trained for this. Yes, uh, it was thoroughly trained. Hello everyone, welcome back to Breath Edge, and welcome to the first episode of Breath Edge recorded with OBS rather than Shadowplay. Yes, Shadowplay is a technology that I will be ditching. It has failed me too, too many times. Just, it, I, I like it. I like that it gives me a little recording overlay in the corner so that I can see when I'm recording and I don't go paranoid thinking that OBS hasn't started up because it's done that on me before. But it's just failed too many times. Well, I see no reason to stay around here. Let's uh, let's just get going. Yeah. Okay, the navigator. By the way, the weapons calibrate themselves automatically when shooting at random targets. I have no idea where to look for everything else listed in the diagnostics, and therefore I suggest exploring the nearest debris. Yeah, that makes sense. So just any random target? I shouldn't have said anything about the weapons. I have to warn you about the illegality of shoot. Ah, uh, never mind. <laughs> yeah, that figures. Okay, it seems to be moving a little bit faster. Ah, good, I've got a couple of question marks up. So, eight kilometers, four kilometers... Well... <sighs> That honestly looks like it's a closer thing to investigate, though. Whatever's going on there. Let's just kind of work our way towards the question marks, I suppose. What's that up ahead? I'm not mistaken, am I? Is it a fully functioning breath edge coffin with hands? We've already seen such coffins, but I doubted it until now. An automatic maintenance team. They can patch us up, but nothing more. We can't get them to completely repair the shuttle. Okay... Do I need any patching up? Or is 250... Like, that bar up at the top, I presume, is my health. Ah, okay. So I was... I did start out badly damaged. It's a good thing that we came here. I'll buff the scratches out of the armor, and then let's put a few new scratches in. Let's see if the coffin bots are friendly. Great. We didn't blow up and are back in line. Let's see if they're friendly. I bet we can initiate diplomatic diplomatic relationships and, and let them help us get home. Yeah, that, that sounds... Hello, friend. Uh, hailing, hailing. Oh, boy. Okay, it controls a little bit... Oh, those guns are loud. It controls a little bit like, uh... However, I'd like to note that your shooting skill is absolutely unimportant here. These weapons have a simplified artificial intelligence with a self-learning system, and they simply adapt to the shooter. <laughs> Not the time suit. It controls a little bit like the X series of games, like, you know, uh, X4 Foundations, X3 Terran Conflict, and Albion Prelude, if you've ever played those. It's just that it's locked into the mouse view. Which is how you usually want to drive it anyway. Let me turn the volume down a little bit. I imagine that I'm having to shout over those guns a little bit. Let's see here. Let me... Eh, not the master volume. Well, maybe the master volume. Yeah, let, let's see if that's a little bit better. That sounds reasonable to me. Of course, I, I won't be able to tell for sure until I have it in post, but... Hopefully that helped. Yes, no longer can I balance the audio channel separately. That's something that I'm going to have to probably fiddle with on a game-by-game -game basis until I get it right. Here are tough little guys if they can take a couple shots from this. Of course, it's mostly down to me missing. Calibration complete. Hitting targets becomes more effective. Drop. Are they respawning? Okay, let's take care of this station. Drop. 
I imagine that'll stop more of them spawning. Yeah. Sir, no sir? Okay. There we go. Yeah, their AI is a little bit basic once you get used to... Once you get used to what the game is expecting you to do. Okay, any others? I don't see any red diamonds on my screen. Let's top up our armor and let's continue on our way. And you know, it's been a while since I looked through the achievements on camera. We might as well get into that habit, I suppose. Oops. Uh, where are the achievements, anyway? Ah, of course. Heroic deed. A rebel. You're a uh, rebel at heart. A rebel by nature and a rebel by horoscope. Down with other people's advice. Stick your fingers in. Everybody thinks you're a rebel. That's that, that, that's quite a bonus, is, isn't it? Because where, where's Sir No Sir? Instructor. Is it a special one? Wow. We, we earned our first special achievement. Someone always has to control an army, even if it's an army of crazy coffins. A coffin squadron without a general is just a bunch of stupid meat containers, and a coffin squadron with a general is also just a bunch of stupid meat containers. But with a general. That's a fact. Judging by the number of coffins in the area, destroying a couple of generals won't have any effect, but it won't, and it won't give you any bonuses as well. Eh. Well. So is there... Oh, is, is that a new one? Or is that just a straggler that we missed? Are you anything? Okay, come on, straggler. So, is there any loot inside these things? Like, it looks pretty empty in there. Looks this... like this is the debris of the liner's bow. It was the only part that contained unique observation modules with domed glass. How this glass survived the disaster is a mystery to me, but it would be nice to get inside, at least out of curiosity. Hmm. Oh, he was pointing at... No, that's the repair bay. Where, 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 were you, where were you pointing, suit? Give me a marker. Something more specific than a question mark, please, because uh, it seems that I can't... I have to find a special place to undock. I can't just pick up sticks anywhere I like. Okay. So I'm seeing little uh, griblies everywhere that we're probably going to have continuous fights along the way. This is a whole new mechanic. That's nice. And thankfully, this old bird is pretty tough and pretty fast to repair. Goodness, we are getting achievements left, right, and center. Yes. It's important to be strafing around and constantly rolling around and avoiding their fire, but then you completely lose track of where you were going. And I've already kind of lost track of where I'm going. I'm not familiar with the area yet. I don't know the landmarks. Oh, boy. The navigation systems would probably help. On the passengers who lived in such modules, but ordinary people could definitely not afford it. I'm sure there's something interesting under this dome. There might even be a whole spaceship. Wow. A whole spaceship. Can you imagine? It looks like some pastures for synthetic cows. Someone surely didn't know a better way to invest their money. Oh, come on. Cattle's always a good investment, even if they're alpha printer. And these synthetic cows seem to have lots of interesting uses. So if I can't get out of the ship, what's all this about? Oh, it's, it's disappearing as I get close. It's just visible debris, I guess. It's evaporating in the, in the presence of our sheer awesomeness. Yes, that's what I'll choose to believe. We can dock here. You don't say... A little bit more specific than here might be helpful. Ah, there's the cows. Okay. 
So do I have to go in through the top? No, that's not... Oh, there it is. Okay. Huzzah! Hmm. Can I build additional storage modules within the ship? Can I build additional anything within the ship? Hmm. I can just drop stuff, though, right? Yeah. And if I undock and then fly away, will it remain there? So I, I fly away, fly around. Has the stake gone? Has it disappeared? No, no, it has not. And that's that. In fact, that's probably why we we can only get off the controls when we're at docking stations because the game is just like it's probably unloading the. It's like saving everything in the scene and then loading it back in whenever we're docked in static. This this compartment never moves. At least that's the way I would code it if this physics system wasn't up for, you know, moving objects around. So, it looks like we're going to be de getting together a, a system just like back in Grandpa's ship where I'm going to have to make a bunch of suitcases for the inevitable pile of random bullshit I'll be gathering. If we can get easy access back to the base, then I'll have to bring the old suitcases in. Yeah. A navigator. Four navigation chips, two electronics, two light bulbs, two refined metal. Hmm. That's what we're going to be using the filters for. Titanium to alkali and a lycoplasma. Okay. Okay. I'm up for it. Maybe best if we keep a gun handy. Just a brief second of zero gravity there. Unexpected. Without a doubt, it's a luxury habitation module. Yeah, this place is swanky. I like the wood paneling. Hmm. Wood paneling with like little gribbly bits and decor on it. It's kind of Retro-futuristic. Almost, but not quite. Yeah, with the plan being to... Uh, okay, I think a suitcase is, what, four refined metal? So every scrap of metal I can find, I need to pick up. Yeah, there's some titanium, too, since they're just handing it to us. We're kind of starting from zero again because of my... Uh, my impulsive decision to just screw it and go. Mm. I've no desire to open the coffins, but now I'm sure they work on the energy produced by the decomposing bodies in them. It's disgusting and brilliant at the same time. Yes, disgustingly brilliant. Mm. Navigation chip. I saw something similar in the diagrams of spaceship navigation systems in Grandpa's garage. There's also an antenna, all sorts of circuit boards, screws... But, but there was no dead body pieces stuck between the capacitors. Although I guess they're not really necessary for navigation. No, no, no. Y you're wrong. It's based on the old principles of like using chicken entrails for scrying. He was shot everywhere. By the way, that's Banana Frank. He's presumably one of the leaders of the green universe. Wow. He even got shot in the banana. Poor guy. Oof, look at that face. Not that I can blame him. Metal, excellent. Huh. You know, I didn't check if we could use the, uh, the toilet in the ship to generate random resources. That's a mechanic that I... Yeah, this in general is a mechanic that I haven't really exploited for anything. Breath Edge. Do not bury yourself ahead of time, handsome. You can still light up a star in the sky. Hmm. Neat. It certainly had some good taste. So, one of the leaders of Green Universe in here, like, in the luxury habitation module. Hmm. 
The Benefits of Vegetarianism for Rabbits. The book is trash for sure, but I must say that by encouraging people to be vegetarians through a deep study of the food supply for rabbits, the authors inadvertently created a guide to the proper fattening of these cute animals. Breeders were very grateful for such detailed scientific work and bought up all the books in a week. <laughs> Have you ever wondered why rabbits eat only foods of plant origin? Our zoologist and vegetarian specialist conducted a thorough study and are eager to share with you the motivation of these mammals in the pages of our book. Here you'll find all the answers to the questions you always wanted to ask the rabbits. Don't miss the other books in the series, The Benefits of Vegetarian for... Book Publisher. The Benefits of Vegetarianism for Book Publisher, sure. I've no doubt about the benefits of vegetarianism, especially for herbivores. If only it could help against blasters. Yeah, well, I guess that if we threw a carrot perfectly into the barrel of a blaster, maybe, maybe we could overload it. What a big corpse. Oh, yeah. I won't be able to scan his face since it's no longer there, but I can assume from his shape that it's the head of the Green Universe Department on Kepler-62, Fat Jim. How did he maintain that build on a strict diet of vegetarianism? Methinks Fat Jim has a secret. Hmm. Well, didn't do him any good to protect him. Milko with sugar, the sweet space treat. Yeah. There aren't many sweet things in space. The Food Regulation Agency doesn't approve the presence of sugar in the food of astronauts and actively promotes their synthetic condensed milk, in which there is slightly more sugar than synthetic muck. I wouldn't say it's not tasty, but I would question the benefits of eating such foods. Yeah, I wouldn't trust this guy with my advertising. He just doesn't have a trustworthy face. 1205737 7. 2305734 Huh I have no idea what these mean I wonder why it doesn't get banned It's probably not because Milko's owner is the party leader's relative Why would it be banned what Oh boy This one got destroyed must have had too much Milko. Sweetened Milko condensed special space version 100% synthetic. Ingredients 100% synthetic Milko, sugar, and uh, preservatives. Calories a lot, best before eternity. A can of condensed milk. To be more exact, synthetic condensed milk. That's why I won't eat it. Somebody once bought my grandpa a can of real condensed milk, which they bought on the black market in a remote sector of the galaxy, and it was so delicious that I even started crying. Or, or maybe I started crying after I got a good spanking for taking the condensed milk without permission. I don't remember. Eating condensed milk is not a bad way to get fat, but a bad way to die after that. The ingredients of this product have long raised questions among doctors. Hmm... Well, I suppose that Green Universe is vegetarian and not vegan. Grass? A package of nutritious and tasty grass, according to the manufacturer. Despite the active promotion of the product as the best food in space, everyone still continues to choke on various types of goo. As for the grass itself, they make roll-up cigarettes from it. I'm sure Jim got fat on grass and humility because that is what he promoted as far as I know. Sheesh. Yeah, fat, humility, and Milko. Hmm. At least that's what we see from our indicate. Ah. Quite a strange trophy for a nature lover. In addition to their incredible peacefulness, these synthetic creatures generally barely move their legs from laziness. Hunting them is like hunting a stone. Yeah, that's a very a 
attractive trophy for sure. Nothing to say for that suit. Nothing that's uh, shaking up your worldview about Fat Jim here. What's in the pot? What's in the box? So, this place is just the hab center for the green universe, I'm guessing, because we're two for two so far. Someone was dragged out into the corridor. Mm hmm. Dragged out entirely of their own will, I'm sure. Both corpses belong to the leaders of the green universe. I have the impression that all the important people of this organization were flying in this module. Yeah. You know, if... Well, I, I'm not sure if they were, like, listed as a terrorist organization. No, no, no. They left digested broccoli on the White House doorstep and they were being hunted down. So, they all mark themselves with these lovely, bright, vivid green spacesuits. They're not hard to find. What's the party doing? Faffing around and just letting them go. Mm. <sighs> Won't say no to some... Broccoli, as the main symbol of the green universe, is frequently used not only in cheesy slogans on fences, but also in commercial activities. I can't imagine who actively buys such symbols of a terrorist organization, but the store shelves are chock full of these toys. Yeah. A very useful thing in space. Very. We can do without it, though. We'll just rough it. Alkali cans of beef. Hello. Eat like a cow, be like a cow. What an attractive slogan. A campaign poster that eloquently hits at something. To be honest, I still don't know if the poster encourages you to become a cow or just advises you to refrain from excessive consumption of plant food. I'd say it's an encouragement for uh, meat products. No, not that. Lot of dead green universe. I can't say I disapprove. Oof. Well, I don't think it's the coffin bots because you think the coffin bots would be shoving them in, you know, I coffins. Doubt anyone survived here. To be used as fuel. He was dragged out of the cabin to unlock the door. A retinal scan is an extremely unpleasant method of data protection, especially for the owner of the retina. The chicken doesn't seem to mind it. Pretty woman. <laughs> what kind of wobbly toy is this? I've never seen one like this in any shops. Its face looks so real. Such perfect lineaments. What beautiful hair, lips, and eyes. If I met such a woman on Earth, I'd marry her immediately. This is the most beautiful wobbly toy in space. Or maybe it's just another carbon dioxide leakage and I'll pass out soon. I'd, I'd better check the valve. Well, he's still calling it Pretty Woman, even now, so... Must just be that we've discovered man's innermost tastes. A Green Universe logo. It's rather peculiar, I must say. No, it seems to more or less list what they're all about, really. They're just being honest about it. You're just not used to looking behind the advertising suit. The poster that gave the name to the notorious environmental group that made all today's mess... The author failed to outdo the masterpiece of modern art, a banana stuck to the wall, but he still got his share of popularity. Gastronomy designed by John Veganson. Hm. It's signed with an eggplant. How nice. There can be no doubt that the Green Universe activists were flying here. The ship's crew probably knew about it, but no one ever took these activists seriously. 
which honestly I can't blame people for. I'm going to go and offload my stuff real quick. Be right back. But yeah, I mean, who could really take a bunch of space vegans seriously? Especially with advertising like theirs. It's locked from the inside and welded shut from the outside. This type of door is unfamiliar to me. It's probably some military project. It's called a locked door suit. Locked. You've seen them before, just not quite this enthusiastically. I know, I know. You can't even really call it a door anymore. It's, it's just a wall that's uh, especially enthusiastic about being decorated. Goodness, a lot of these. Excellent. That should that should have me with enough metal to start building some suitcases. Hmm. Seems like this robot tried to make itself wired, but it only burned out. By the way, the coffins clearly don't have external charging ports. Yeah. Shoved it right up in there. No wonder. Looks like all the doors are locked, and I don't know how to open them. Wow. He's so enthusiastic about his vegetarianism, he turned himself green. Impressive. A Breath Edge Energy Core? Okay. Maybe this will explain how I was supposed to actually disable those ones. The head of the Breath Edge Funeral Agency repeatedly stated his desire to participate in the development of the space industry but it was always rejected by the ruling party. This technology was created at the same time as the government launched its new generation space engines, all characteristics of which put the Breath Edge project in the shade. The further fate of this, of this technology is unknown. Hmm. This door is also unfamiliar to me, but it's clearly from a different series. It's called an opened door suit. Opened. It's different from a locked one in that it is not locked. Hmm. Well, I guess I guess it wouldn't make sense for it to be no carrots with the green universe. I wonder if that's why people started smoking carrots to get around that. Oof. Circular saw. A great tool when put to good use. If you have extra limbs, you can fasten the saw to an angle grinder and try to use it not on wood, but on metal. The owner of this saw tried it, and he died. It looks like he's from the green universe, and apparently he hasn't heard about the dangers of a circular saw blade on an angle grinder. Yeah, yeah, that's a amateur mistake. Clearly we know better and would never try something so crude and and uh, obviously doomed to failure. Sweet. Hmm. Saw hinge. Oh, okay. Saw drill. Saw drill? Despite his foolish death, this man clearly knew about the weak point in the door's design and tried to open it. I can modify the angle grinder's blueprint a little so that we could continue the dead man's work of destruction and get under the dome. And I'm sure that our our prototype will work much better than his. All right, so indeed I did. I, I should have just waited a moment because they'd, be, they'd send me running back to the ship anyway. Let's just gather up every last resource we see along the way since we have a... Ah, sweet. Yep, yep. I'll meet you there in a moment. Okay, let's take a look at this. Saw drill. Hmm. A unique tool that can saw and drill at the same time, probably, if you really believe it can work. Although there's a small chance that it's not quite correctly assembled. Okay, that shouldn't be, uh, that shouldn't be anything out of my reach. Saw drill. Beauteous. Let's hope it has more uses than just this one thing. And I should also have enough refined metal now to throw together a, uh, a nice little, uh, there, yes. Oh. 
need to do a bit of inventory shuffling. It begins again. The great stack of inventory bullshit. All right, drill saw. Let's You've see what you got. What is that? You read my instructions, didn't you? Yeah. This is exactly what you asked for. Don't you remember the good job I did on the debugging tool or the cryptographic whatever? Yeah. Works perfectly. The door is loose. Just kick it out. Ow. Yep. <laughs> I was expecting a slightly different result, but this will do as well. <laughs> Whatever works. Oh, that looks uh that looks somewhat deadly. Okay. Let me in. They tried to open the doors from the inside, but they got badly injured and lost too much blood. A real forest in the middle of space. It's not very rational, but impressive. Yeah. Oof. Nearly got myself zapped there. Okay, let's get out of his cone of fire. Yeah, he seems to be just dead, but still active, so maybe we can just... Exodus, you say? Okay. Hmm. Another Agent 47 looking guy in there. Uh, yeah, I don't think I'm going to be typing that into a binary translator. That's a lot to do. Oh, boy. After stopping the liner, all those who were involved are subject to disposal. Execution of the Exodus plan is activated. All group leaders must be prepared. Okay. The orders to the activists didn't have this information. It's unlikely that they would have agreed to be disposed of, and the binary code in the note raises the question, who was this note intended for? Is that really what it says, what the description... Well, who knows. I, I think I saw something that I could do with one of the trees while I was running by it. Hutch. How, how very nice. Uh, okay, then. <laughs> There's no Ooh. connection between the maintenance team and the green universe. His murder was meaningless. I need to make yet another new drill. Oh, I can just take the electronics. Okay. I won't complain. Poor synthetic cows. They didn't even have didn't proper... Even spare the cows. Yeah. Well, the cows would have been pretty miserable here anyway. Look at this. This isn't grass. This is carpet. The poor cows are already existentially challenged enough with the whole synthetic thing. You don't need to start just having them eat synthetic... Active anti-asteroid protection. We could use it, by the way. You don't say. We somehow bypass the protection without breaking it. Okay. Are you going to let me in on this plan, suit? Because I'm very up for breaking it. But fine. I guess just get as distant as we can from it. Get out of range and then work our way around. I'm guessing this fist marker has something to do with your plan, suit? Your plan that I really should know? Okay, fine. 
I'm the stupid human. I'll just follow the stupid marker. Hmm. Yeah. These wires lead to the shuttle. And yeah. by markings, they are designed to power light weapons. Really? Well, I'll take a look at that when we aren't in danger of getting blowed up from doing so. ask you for a long time about your warm relationship with the chicken, but I won't say anything. By the way, the anti-asteroid protection is deactivated. Are you implying something with that suit? Hey, I've hit a couple of things with this handy scrapper, haven't I? Yeah, and, uh, still durable. It really is infinite. Sweet. Hello? Did that get ya? Have you been God? Yep, they've been God. Sweet. The shuttle's registration number is hidden. Given that the leaders of the green universe were in the habitation modules, there was someone even worse here. Yeah. So you said I could use these. How can I use them? What do you want from me, suit? Personal shuttle of Frederick Momoni, leader of the Green Universe. And it looks like these are his personal body parts. Wow. He has impersonal body parts? The communications node was hacked, if I may say so. Hmm. Ooh. A microphone, a simple oscillator, electrical tape, and a piece of meat. My study of anatomy ended at the age of 15 when I got to... Um, Never mind. But this looks like a lot like a windpipe. I'm not sure how this thing worked, but it must have worked successfully as the Green Universe member followed their dead leader's orders. Huh. You know, this really fits with the zombie robots thing. This is... This is a... Techromancy. Yeah. It looks like someone was simply using the Green Universe activists, and none of the orders came from Mr. Momoni at all. But to what end? And who, of course. Apparently, being shocked, the artificial intelligence of the spacesuit went into a forced update mode and never returned. Perhaps some specialist will be able to extract the details of Frederick's death from it. Or maybe not. Hmm. And here is the anti-asteroid protection system. We don't even need to hack it, as it has already been done for us. Good. Now we only need to find a few rare parts. Okay. What do we need an anti-asteroid system? Would it be improved guns? Microplasm. It's something microscopic with plasma, which, judging by the crackling of the spacesuit, helps with the guidance system the cooling system, and the plasma system. Whatever that means. Although, it looks more like some ridiculous piece of trash rather than a useful part. Ridiculous pieces of trash has been our bread and butter man. Is that my fourth filter? I don't remember how many filters I have my hands on now, but I have my grubby mitts on a whole lot of them. Could be that Frederick is ill, but it's more likely that someone had killed him long before the liner took off. He looks a little bit like Nixon, I guess, but not really. I don't know, if he's supposed to look like someone famous, I can't tell. I don't know him. Okay, so... Anti-asteroid protection system. So, the main leader of the Green Universe is long dead, the other leaders are killed, and the crash was initiated by some unknown people who control the coffins. Sounds like a B action movie script. Or a B video game script or something. Hmm. Either way, the plot does thicken. 
Yeah, and the use of his trachea in an artificial voice box to spoof orders, that really does scream of tech necromancy being a thing in like the the whole I coffin bot is not involved in all this but I must inform you that when you assigned the contract for the funeral you agreed to everything in the terms of service to absolutely everything oh boy and we didn't read the terms of service did we you gonna explain what we signed ourselves on for a suit or are you just gonna let that implication sink in Either way, I guess it explains how this isn't one big lawsuit waiting to happen. But yeah, the fact Despite that... the obvious signs of some large-scale conspiracy, I still have the feeling that the catastrophe was accidental. I can't figure out what the hypothetical terrorists might have gained from the complete destruction of the liner. Most likely, the activists of the Green Universe were following orders to capture the liner and then simply screwed up, which is confirmed by some of our findings. Hmm. Okay, I mean... It's also confirmed by the fact that they're, you know, the green universe. No, I'm thinking it's more that some that some other deeper factor within the green universe. These coffin bots they were creating, like... I think the coffin bots were created by some tech romancer inside of green universe and uh, got the better of them. Or, or something like that. Either way... Hmm. Okay, anti-asteroid protection. Need two microplasm, a compensator, magnet, and inductor. If I can just find another the microplasm, I can throw that together real quick. An active system for protecting civilian spaceships from small asteroids and debris. It can recognize danger, determine the trajectory, shoot, and hit. As it turned out, the system can also be successfully reconfigured to shoot not only tiny objects, but also people. So uh, this looks like a weapon improvement. Navigator. Uh, how many navigation ships do I have? I have three. Hmm. I do, however, have four filters. So what else do I need for the filtration system? I need to find a lycoplasma, and I think I'll be able to throw that together. Yeah, I don't have any on me just yet. Okay, well. The plot is definitely thickening. And not all in the direction it was before. This is honestly rather fascinating, isn't it? And I think that uh, I've reached a good stopping point for the night too. So I'll just uh, I'll just let the happenings today sink in a little bit and percolate in your thoughts. And uh, I'll see you next time to see to see what we'll see next time. Yeah.